Hello everyone. Welcome to Sweetie Speaks official YouTube channel. Today we are going to learn about UVM test bench architecture. In case you have not seen the previous videos in this series, we talked about UVM introduction and UVM components. Before you come and understand UVM test bench architecture, I request you to first understand UVM introduction and UVM components. Because without understanding UVM components, you will not understand UVM test bench architecture. Let's get started. Inside your UVM test bench, the first thing is that that is design under test, which is the actual design. Now, this design can be anything. It can be your IP. If you are doing IP level verification, it can be subsystem. If you are doing subsystem verification, it can be SOC, which is system on chip. If you are doing system on chip verification. It can be your CPU if you are doing CPU verification. It can be your GPU if you are doing GPU verification. So it can be anything. Whatever is your design, whatever you want to verify, that particular design will be your design under test. Now this design under test needs to talk to your test bench. To establish the connection between DUT and your test bench, we have something called as interface. Interface is nothing but a bundle of signals. Whatever signals are there in DUT, the bundle of these signals is actually interface. Now, if you want to, if you want to verify your design, you need to give it some input. And you need to observe its output. Give it some input means you need to drive the DUT. Uh, the component which drives the DUT is called as driver. Drive means it will drive the inputs. It will give some value to the inputs of the design under test so that it generates some output. Now this driver is connected to a component called a sequencer. Sequencer is a component which has sequences. Sequences can be anything. Say for example, you are doing some testing on reset. So you will have some reset sequences. So depending on what testing you are doing, that kind of sequences you will have inside your sequencer. And the sequences then go to the driver and the driver converts the transaction level information from the sequences. The sequences have transaction level information which is then converted to pin or signal level information before giving it to the interface and then interface gives those inputs to your design under test. Now, when you give some input to the design, it will generate some output. You need to observe that output. You need to monitor that output. The component which does that is called as monitor. So, main job of monitor is to monitor the outputs of your design. Now, the interface, driver, monitor, sequencer, sequences, all this are a part of your UVM component called as agent. Agent can be considered as something which has all the components required to communicate to your design under test. So everything which is required to communicate will be inside your agent which is interface, driver, monitor, sequencer, sequence. And in UVM components like the previous lecture, we had also seen there is something called a subscriber. The reason we have not kept it here is it's a, not a mandatory component. So if you want, you can have a subscriber. In UVM components lecture, we already said subscriber is something which has TLM analysis 
export and this TLM analysis export is connected to a analysis port and the job of subscriber is it is subscribed to your analysis port it means whatever transactions come to your analysis port your subscriber will be able to see those transactions your subscriber will know those transactions so that is another component which you can have inside your UVM test bench if you see here we are forming the test bench architecture step by step this is a easy way to understand your test bench like one by one we are constructing DUT then it was connected to interface then you need to drive some inputs to the DUT you do it through the driver driver gets the input from sequencer which has sequences then since you gave some input DUT generates some output and those outputs are monitored by monitor this is very easy way to understand and all the components which are required to communicate to the DUT everything is present into something called as agent now say for example in your design you have multiple communication protocols say I have USB and in my design I support two versions USB 2.0 3.0 so you will have two different agents one for USB 2.0 one for USB 3.0 and similarly, each of those agents will have their own interface, their own driver, their own monitor, their own sequencer and their own sequences. For your understanding, I have taken a simple example in which you just have one agent. But it is possible de depending on your design that you will have multiple agents. This is possible. Now you got some output, design output inside your monitor. Finally, you need to analyze that output if you want to verify your design. There is a scoreboard inside your UVM test bench. It's a UVM component scoreboard, which will take the output which you are getting from the design through monitor. It will take that output. Now, the scoreboard also has something called as predictor or reference module wherein the scoreboard will calculate what is the expected output depending on whatever inputs you give to design the scoreboard also calculates or predicts what should be the expected output so it has uh, some predicted expected output and it is seeing the actual output from the design through monitor whatever monitor has monitored that is the actual output so scoreboard has two outputs now one is expected or predicted output and one is the actual output your scoreboard will perform the comparison of both these outputs and if both these outputs are matching your design under test is performing as expected if both these outputs are not matching it means your design is not performing as expected now in this case also it's not necessary that it will be a design bug only there is a possibility that uh, there is some problem in your test bench you need to fix your test bench and then maybe the expected and actual output will match one example is maybe in your predictor itself you have done some miscalculation of the expected output that is also possible it can be a problem with your scoreboard predictor calculation wherein you need to fix the scoreboard and in case your prediction is correct and still the output is mismatching then we will debug it and we will understand that which part of the design has design work so scoreboard is a very very important component because this is the component which is helping you find the design bugs by comparing the actual and expected output we are going to see the scoreboard a lot in detail in the coming lectures but for now i am just helping you understand this test bench architecture in easy and step by step language <clears throat> now all these things your agent scoreboard all these things are present inside a component which is called as environment so environment can be considered is considered as a as a container which contains your agent in this case there is a single agent but it is possible that it will contain multiple agents depending on your design and it contains the scoreboard also and in case you want to have some additional checks 
it will contain the additional checkers in case you want to do the coverage then it will contain the coverage collector also so all these things are present inside environment what does the environment consist of your agent your scoreboard your coverage collectors if needed your additional checkers if needed now all these things together <clears throat> are present in, inside something called as test test is the actual test which you are writing so this test can test any sort of scenario inside your design the main responsibilities of your test is to configure your test bench and it will initiate the stimulus you need to give some stimulus to the design how will that stimulus be initiated by starting the sequences so this is the main job of your test it will configure your test bench components it will it will initiate the stimulus by starting your sequences all this together your test your dut everything is present into something called as top so this top is the top most layer inside your test bench architecture which also contains design under test along with other test bench components if you remember in the previous lecture where we studied about uvm components we also said that the uvm test bench is a layered architecture if you observe here we have built layers of the uvm components there is agent which will have interface driver monitor sequencer sequences then we have environment which contains your agents and scoreboard then we have test bench which contains environment in this case one but it can contain multiple also depending on your design whatever you want to test and then your dut along with all your test bench components are present inside the layer which is top so here if you observe it is a layered test bench another thing which we said is object oriented now if you see each of these components in uvm say you top this is extended from a class called as uvm top test is extended from a class called as uvm test env is extended from a class called as uvm env agent is extended from a class called as uvm agent all these classes are provided by the U uvm itself similarly driver is extended from uvm driver monitor from uvm monitor sequencer from uvm sequencer like this it is a object oriented test bench i hope with this you are now easily able to understand the test bench and how different layers of the test bench are formed what different uh, components in the uvm test bench do what they contain and how they connect with the dut and how they verify the design under test how they verify the actual output is really matching with the expected output using scoreboard this is very important lecture because this forms the basis of your uvm you need to understand uvm test bench before you understand more in detail about uvm so i request you if you if you want go through this lecture again and again go through the previous lectures uvm components again and again until you understand it thoroughly then only it will be easy for you to understand about the upcoming lectures and uh, in the previous lecture which was uvm introduction we had told that for uvm system verilog is the basis so please learn system verilog first then learn uvm we have a lot of system verilog tutorials already uploaded on this youtube channel sweetie speaks official and a lot more system verilog lectures are going to come i request you to please understand that first then go through the previous lecture of uvm inside the series 
then understand this uvm test bench architecture so that in the upcoming lectures when we deep dive into uvm you understand it properly i hope these lectures are helping you to learn vlsi and i hope my teaching is easily understandable for you i am open to feedback request you to please give your feedback in comments so that i can incorporate those in upcoming lectures to stay tuned to such content in vlsi and learn vlsi in easy language please subscribe to sweety speaks official youtube channel thank you